the people who registered for the call, we have eight on so far. So we'll give them just a few more minutes to get connected and then we'll get started. Sounds like a plan. Hello, everyone, so far. Hello, hello. What we could do while we're waiting for the others to join, um, we could start introducing ourselves. Um, so I'm Jennifer, LA Legal Assistant. I'll be hosting the call this evening. Um, we have a lot of good stuff for you guys, so I'm excited that you guys are all here. Um, I'll pass it off to Asia. Hello, everyone. My name is Asia Beard. Uh, I am a restaurant consultant. I have my own uh, consultant agency, and VSCDC recently brought me on board to help out with not only your night market, but some other programs that we are establishing at the center. Um, I'm really excited to teach all of you. We're going to talk about some food costs, um, how to pass a, a health inspection and get an A, and then also all of the registrations, permits, and licenses that you need. So look out for those classes on the VSCDC website, and then I'll also be tripling some of those classes into our program uh, agenda for the night market. So looking forward to getting to know all of you guys, tasting your food, meeting you in person, and seeing you in action at the night market. Thank you. Um, the next person is Vanessa. Vanessa, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa Punche. I'm the owner of LA Grind Coffee and Tea Bar. Uh, I have a coffee truck uh, that I use for catering. And I have a brick and mortar in Mid-City, Los Angeles, a uh, coffee shop slash cafe. Thank you. Um, thank you, Vanessa. Um, I'm, uh -oh, the doorbell's ringing. People are coming in. Um, the next name I see is Lonnie Rowe. Hi, everyone. I'm Lonnie Rowe, owner CEO of Calypso Sweet Ice. We are a sweet shave ice business um, where you get to make your own. We are tent and table set up. Uh, at this time, uh, hope is to become mobile and then have a fleet. Thank you, Lonnie. Um, let's see, uh, Dana Cumming. I'm just going in order of the names as, as they pop up on the screen. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Uh, it's Dana. Um, MC Dene, some may know me as I am the MC to the DJ MC duo Lamarcia, and um, yeah, we just provide entertainment. All right, Dana, thank you so much. Um, the next name I see is Kim Jin. Hi, everyone. This is Kim. I am the owner of Kicking Juice. Um, it's just a small jewelry operating out of the LA area, obviously, um, where I sell 100% all natural cold pressed juices, wellness shots, cleanses, almond milks. Um, everything is just homemade and, and freshly made. I'm currently working at different pop up events um, and definitely want to one day own a brick and mortar and also a mobile truck. Um, so I'm just here to gain more experience and network and get to know more people. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. And um, that was, um, thank you for saying um, everything that you said, because that was one of the things that I was hoping would come out of this um, collective also is that we can share experiences because some of us are new pop-up vendors. Some of us have already uh, made it to the level of being a brick and mortar. And I think sharing the stories of getting from A to B is gonna be super important and super helpful. So thank you for sharing that. Um, the next name I see is Nubian Goddess Wasty. I am so sorry for the delay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Elzaria, the owner of Nubian Goddess Waste Beads. 
and I am excited to be on this call and to learn as much as I can and uh, offer whatever I can to help as well and look forward to networking and, and learning some new things. So. Thank you for sharing. Um, the next name I see is Josephine Gardner. Hi everyone, um, I'm actually with Inclusive Action for the city. So I'm just, um, Nicole forwarded me the email. So I'm just sitting in um, to just meet everybody. So it's very nice to meet everybody. I'm a technical assistant at Inclusive Action where I provide one-on-one um, -on -one business coaching and support and help with loans as well. Happy to be here. And we're happy to have you here. So uh, everyone, as we get into um, more into the presentation, you'll learn that inclusive action um, is a very important uh, part of this. Um, there are several organizations that are partnering uh, together, including inclusive action and um, Vermont Boston Economic Development. So again, there's a lot of um, good information and resources that are going to be shared um, as part of this collective. Um, the next name that I see is uh, Dippity Donut. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chaka Stewart. I was invited to join you guys' group by Marcel Douglas. Um, Dippity Donuts is fairly new. Um, we actually just had our one-year anniversary. We've done a couple of pop-ups um, throughout the city. Um, this is new for us. We are looking to move into the mall for the holiday um, to see how that goes. So the whole pop-up scene is new to us. So we're looking to go to eventually to a brick and mortar also. Thanks for the invite, Marcel. Thank you for being here. Um, and with that, um, let's go to Marcel. Marcel, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, good evening, everyone. I am Marcel Douglas from Island Spice Things, uh, LLC, Jamaican food. Um, and I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to see everyone. I am so excited for this. Hey, Dippity Donut, it's so good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Good afternoon or evening, Miss Asia Baird. It's good to see you. Hi, hi, Lonnie Rowe and everyone else who is here. Thank you. I am a pop-up um, currently based mostly out of Lamert Park, but I do other pop-ups, different area. And um, I'm hoping to move in to or move my scale my business to a food truck. Um, so this is important for me right now. So thank you for putting this together, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Thank you, Marcel. And uh, Nadia? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Nadia. I'm with Dope Vegan Joan. I specialize in vegan street foods, as well as um, Philadelphia water ice. Um, it's like a sorbet. It's um, all um, vegan. Um, I do not want a brick and mortar. I'm, I'm gearing towards a trailer or a food truck. So I'm coming here to learn all um, everything that I need to learn to, to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Um, how about Tika Buchanan? Hi, everybody. I'm Tika. Hi guys, I'm Tika. Um, I'm the owner of Doshi Didn't. I sell desserts, um, mostly cookies, cakes, um, pound cakes and stuff like that. Everything's made from scratch. I'm here because um, right now I'm in three farmer's markets, but I want to get like a truck and learn maybe some more vending tips and techniques and stuff, see what else it is. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, and I believe, did we get everyone? Did everyone have a chance to introduce themselves? Uh, I hope I'm saying this right and forgive me if I say it wrong. Is it Ema Idu? Hi, um, my name is Ema Idu. I am the founder of Dinah's Cupcakes. I'm in Upland. I've only done, I believe, uh, 
to pop-up events. Um, I think my end goal would probably be a brick and mortar. Um, but yeah, Lonnie invited me to this event, so I wanted to get more information. Thank you. Um, we appreciate you being here, and thank you to everyone who um, invited someone. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen while we're uh, talking. That's why my camera's off. But um, let's, okay. Um, just to give a little bit of uh, background about this night market, um, it's more than just a pop-up market um, at night. What we're trying to do is, what we're going to do, I'm not going to say try, but what we're doing is we're going to create this uh, cohort and it's to help um, Black women vendors scale their business to the next level. The reason that we're doing this and we're specifically saying Black women food vendors is because um, two primary reasons. Number one, um, Chase Bank um, gave a $5 million grant to Inclusive Action. And I'm sorry, just one moment, please. I think we've all been there. How many of us are moms on this call? It seems like everybody's always making noise when you're on a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. So um, the first thing, as I was mentioning, is that uh, Chase Bank did a $5 million grant and Inclusive Action is the administrator. And then Josephine, um, if I'm saying anything wrong, if, please feel free to jump in and correct me. So, um, Inclusive Action is the administrator of the fund. Out of that $5 million, um, which is allocated specifically for Black women and Latina um, women uh, street food vendors, is part of it's going to go to research and help um, with po uh, policy change. So some of our uh, food vendors on here tonight, like uh, Lonnie, Medea, and Marcel, they actually just came back from Sacramento lobbying for one of those policy changes, which is SB 972. So in addition to um, funding research and legal advocacy for the uh, food vendors, there's also gonna be a portion where inclusive action is going to be able to give, I believe the number is um, 300 uh, micro loans to our food vendors. Um, with the micro loans and coming from a group like inclusive action and or uh, Vermont Slauson, Vermont Slauson is also a CDFI, that basically means that um, the underwriting criteria is not as strict as what you would find at a regular bank because they know we're getting started. They know most of us um, come from underserved communities. They know most of us have um, various challenges with um, building um, business credit, um, being a bank, having point of sale systems and things like that. Um, so that was the first and primary reason that um, we brainstormed around this uh, class and this training because we wanted black uh, women vendors to have access to that $5 million. Um, another thing that's coming on is the city of LA is doing this uh, big open air economy. So what the open air economy means is that they're going to be encouraging more outdoor pop-ups. They're making al fresco, which was the outdoor dining that started during COVID and it was supposed to be temporary just through the end of COVID. Now they're going to make it permit, uh, permanent. City Council started back in March taking the steps to making Al Fresco permanent. Well, if you have more restaurants that are vending outside, what does that mean for street food vendors? Um, so that's another reason that we wanted to create this cohort. And then the other part of it was, um, like I mentioned, SB 972 and doing the advocacy work to get um, laws and rules change that make it easier for street vendors to get permits. Because right now, nowhere in the state of California can an individual pop-up vendor get a proper health permit. And the way that it works in the city of LA is that in order for you to get the street vendor permit, which comes from the, uh, the Bureau of Street Services, you have to complete the health department um, process, which is through the county of LA. And because there isn't a direct path for pop-up vendors. There is no way for food vendors, uh, pop-up food vendors to be able to get a street vending permit. Um, the other part, another thing that we looked at 
is that beyond pop-up vendors, we have vendors who do food trucks and mobile food carts. It is very expensive and very hard to uh, get through the health department process. Either you purchase a truck that's already been approved by the health department, which can you know run you 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars or more, or a lot of people have tried to um, save money by purchasing some kind of a truck or having a custom designed cart built for themselves. But when you do that, you have to get plans and have the plan submitted to the health department and have them approve it. And a lot of people find that it's really difficult to get through that process. Having plans drawn up is expensive. Uh, making corrections, that means you have to go back to the person who drew up the plans, they're charging you more money. So with all of these things in mind, we wanted to create um, a way for women's street food vendors to work together. Uh, we wanted to bring in as many resources as we could into the community because that's the other thing. Most of us who are um, based in Lamert Park, Crenshaw, just the general South Central area, we don't have access to a lot of um, resources that are needed. For example, there's not a lot of affordable commissaries. There's not a lot of affordable uh, commercial kitchens and all of these different things. So we got, you know, how do we make um, permits and food, uh, street food vending more accessible to the community? How about we get the community together in one spot and then we just start bringing in all of the resources. So I'll stop there to see if anyone has any um, initial questions about anything that I just shared. And please feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. I can't see the hand. Okay. So I sent you a message. You maybe didn't see it. Did you want me to share the presentation? If so, you just need to um, either make me a co-host or unlock the, the share screen privileges. Oh, yes, that would be so wonderful. Because one okay. thing I am not is a multitasker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I need to make you the co-host, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll do that. So there's no questions so far from anyone. And then um, let me also um, share that this night market is is an actual part of the um, training program. So we can only have food vendors in here. So it's not going to be, this cohort is not going to be open to anyone who's not a food vendor. Um, we I touched a little bit on um, inclusive action. So the other um, organizations and partners that are working with us on this um, cohort is um, inclusive action, Vermont Lawson Economic Development. Some of you have experience with them from the Start to Scale Part 1 that we did with Chase Bank um uh asia and she's going to share more about her company and what she does and the things that she's going to be sharing with you as food vendors um, myself la legal assistant and then we've also um been in conversation with both the city and the county and they've um, both shared that they want to support this and help uh, help us with this um this cohort so um, as you can see on the screen, um, it's, uh, this is the Black Women Vend um, Start to Scale Part 2. It's the Food Vendor Training Cohort for Black Women Street Vendors. Um, I'm just going to read the bullet points, and then Asia's going to go through them, uh, some of them in a little more detail. But what the goals of the class are are to um, uh, teach women about you know, food cost and menu engineering. Um, and that's a really important thing because oftentimes when we talk to food vendors, it's like, okay, well, even though you went home with a lot of cash at the end of the day from this particular event, how do you know that you actually made a profit? Do you know how much money you spent to purchase your ingredients? Do you know how much money um, have you factored in what it cost you to be at the event? Some events might only be $50. Other events we're hearing are three and $400, $600 to participate in. Um, what other costs do you have to be part of this market? And when you look at all those costs together, did you really make money? Did you break even? Did you operate at a, a loss? So those are the conversations that we want to have. So it can help guide your business planning. Um, the other part that we're really, really going to go into is the LA, um, LA County Health Codes and Permits. 
In addition to the information that Asia's going to share with us, we talked to Holly Mitchell's office today, and they're going to arrange for someone from the county health department to come out and speak at one of the classes and also let you be able to um, ask questions so you can get direct answers. Because sometimes when we're having conversations, it, it'll go kind of like, oh, well, we'll say, well, you need a TFF and you need your prepare on site. Well, that's not what they told me at this office and that's not what happened over here. So we want to be clear because we don't know everything, but so we want to get it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So we're going to have someone from the health department come out. The other thing that we're going to um, help with is getting your um, MBE and your WBE certification. What those are is your minority business enterprise and your woman business enterprise certification. You might ask, why is that important to me as a food vendor? When you have those certifications, and when we get to another part, we're going to help those who are interested register with the city and the county to be city and county vendors. Um, it opens up more opportunities for you based on you having that certification. So, for example, um, the city mall, um, which is downtown LA and it's in the downtown Civic Center area where City Hall is and all the court buildings are, they actually have a request for proposals out meaning they're looking for pop-up vendors. They're looking for pop-up food vendors. And the requirements are that you have to have all of your paperwork, you know, your uh, business tax registration certificate, your California seller's permit, and be able to show that you made $50,000 in revenues for the past two years. So that would be a huge opportunity to be in the city uh, mall because city employees, they don't want to get in their cars and drive around downtown and things like that. They want to be able to walk through the food court where you are a vendor and be able to get your Jamaican food, your vegan food, or whatever the case may be. So again, all, all of the things that we're uh, teaching to are to help you scale your business to be profitable and to have longevity in your business. We're also going to discuss business finances. Um, but with the business finances, a lot of our vendors are using uh, Venmo and Cash App or taking cash. Well, how do you um, track your um, income and your expenses if you are not keeping um, a centralized uh, uh, set of books, is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to introduce different bookkeeping systems, whether it's Wave, which is free and which is used by the county and recommended by the county through their um, small business development um, agency, or you can pay for something like QuickBooks, or we, you can use a simple Excel spreadsheet. There are all these different things that you can do, but we want to help you to start getting your um, books and records in a centralized place and really being able to track and budget. That leads into the next area, which is your point of sale system. Some of us already use Square. Some people use PayPal. Um, there's a few other point of sale systems that you can use, you know, at your pop-ups, but the importance, in our opinion, is that you're using some kind of point of sale system, because if you're at the reggae fest, or this weekend there's a jazz festival, and you have hundreds and hundreds of client uh, customers that are standing in line, it's like you're just taking the cash and sticking it in your pocket, or you're, you know, if you have people helping you, this person is taking an order, ringing it on cash app. How, how do you know how much money you're really generating? The other thing with a point of sale system, it also, some of them can also help you control your inventory. So if you know you bought 12 uh, enough um, chicken wings or 12 boxes of chicken wings, every time you ring up a chicken wing plate, then it can deduct the number of chicken wings per plate. And then you have a running inventory. So you're not kind of scrambling when you have an event the very next day. You know what you have, you know what you need. Um, and the most important goal, circling back to the um, Chase $5 million grant and also the loans that are available through Inclusive Action of Vermont Blossom, is how do we get you grant ready and loan ready? And believe it or not, sometimes in order to get a grant, you still have to show similar documentation as if you were applying for a loan. So that you know goes back to the business finances and the point of sale system. Um, so again, the end game is to help you get capital, to help you have access to capital so that you can grow your business, so that you can hire employees, so that you can have multiple locations. Um, 
there was one person during the introduction, she said she's in two farmers markets. So does that mean you set up, um, you know, at one farmer's market and you pay someone else to set up at the other one, just hypothetically if they're on the same day? So then what does that look like for your cost and for your income? Because if you make a lot of money at one farmer's market, you don't do well at the other, but you still have to pay the other person who set up plus you put product over there. How do you balance that out? How do you manage it? Um, so that those will be the classroom sessions. The classroom sessions will be on Tuesdays from 10 to 11. They'll be via Zoom or in person. And then, so that's like the, you know, when you're in college, you have the lecture and the lab session. Our lab session is gonna be the live uh, night market. Um, before I jump into the live night market, does anyone have any questions about any of the previous bullet points or what's gonna be covered in the class session? And again, please, if you do, just um, unmute yourself and jump in. I can't, because the screen is being shared, I can't see the hands for real now. Okay, got it. it. Um, just quickly, I just wanted to uh, make sure I got something. So with the the lab sessions and the classroom sessions, right? So the Zoom and the in-person sessions, you, to to get all the benefits and all the information and everything, you have to show up to every, every session is mandatory, correct? Yes, it is. And that's why we're having the info session. Thank you for bringing that up. Because what will happen is this is just an info session where we're giving a basic overview. The actual start date of the program isn't until next Wednesday, the 17th. So that leaves a week window for people to ask questions, for people to look at their calendars and see that they can commit, you know, to uh, an hour on Tuesday and three hours um, on Wednesday. Um, because the other portion of this, the live mar night market is gonna be for three months. And um, the classroom sessions will be for three months also. So we're gonna do a lot of hand holding, a lot of um, question answering, a lot of um, just sticking to your side, you know, in whatever way you need for this first three months. The second three months, you're kind of gonna be on your own to see how you do um, with the new tools that you've been given. And of course, we'll be here. You can always circle back and say, hey, you know, I did this market and this happened. And, you know, what do you think? And we'll still help you with your books and records and things like that. The total um, commitment is actually six months. Um, because, again, going um, teaching the class to the underwriting guidelines from um, the CDFI, they want to see that you've been in business for at least six months and that you have consistent income during that six-month period. Now, for people who can't make that commitment, um, you know, for the first three months, that's fine. We can still help. What we would do is we would match you to a business coach and a technical um, assistance person um, at Vermont Slauson who can go through your um, go through your business with you. Um, you might not, um, you know, one of the things that we're going to do. Um, with Asia is she's going to pop up like a sample tent to show us, you know, how we can better engage people with their eyes and encourage them to come over to our booth. So uh, things like that you might miss, but we can still have someone sit down with you and help you get loan ready, help you get a business bank account, help you get a point of sale system. So again, if you cannot commit to the um, 11 weeks, I believe it is, it's 11 or 12 weeks, if you can't commit to that, that's okay. We still want to help you. So for the live night, the live night market, um, that will require a commitment. It will require, you know, a, a signed agreement, and we'll work out a lot of details. Does that answer your question, Lonnie? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay. So. Um, at the end of the six month um, period, um, what we um, hope to do again is to get at least 20 women um, access to capital where we have completely packaged them up and they are ready to have their package submitted to an underwriter. And the package that they have is so great that the underwriter looks at the first page and says, yes, you got the loan. Um, I'm just kidding about that part, but the goal is to make sure that we get at least 20 women from this program, uh, loans and or grants. 
Uh, we can go to the next one. Um, so as I shared a little bit of, uh, previously, the program highlights, it's a six month program. There's three months of the classroom um, lab, and then there's three months of follow-up and tracking. And when we say tracking, it's just like making sure you're still um, having access to events that are going to help you make money. Um, what we're hearing a lot from vendors now is that, oh, I signed up to go to this pop-up, I paid $100, $300, but I didn't get any clients because the event didn't market us, didn't market the event. So we, uh, when we say tracking, we want to help you find events that are going to be profitable money-making events. Um, in addition to committing to the time period, we're going to ask vendors to commit to transitioning from cash to being banked. A lot of us um, are used to dealing just in cash. Some of us may have some banking issues. We might be on check systems for some people. Uh, not trusting banks or keeping your money at home or dealing on a cash level has some cultural implications to it. You know, that's how my parents ran their store. That's how my grandparents ran their store, you know, those kind of things. So we are going to um, ask that anyone who partic participates in the, um, the cohort that they be willing to open a bank account. Um, we are talking to One United for people who specifically want to bank black. We're talking to Broadway Federal for people who specifically want to bank black. Um, we're talking to Chase. They're the ones who put up the $5 million, you know, to make this possible. So what would it look like for you to have a uh, biz, uh, business account with them? We're also asking vendors to commit to being set up on some kind of bookkeeping system. Again, it could be Wave. It could be QuickBooks. It could be an Excel spreadsheet. It could actually be a notepad like this one where at the end of you know the evening you write down how much you started with, how much your product cost you, and how much you ended up with. But we just want there to be some kind of, again, centralized um, record keeping system. And then um, again, we've been given um, kind of like a checklist of what inclusive action and most CDFIs look for uh, when they're underwriting the loans. So we're gonna share that with you uh, during the cohort and then we're going to just make sure you check all of the, you're able to check all of the boxes. Um, there's a way, we'll show you how you can pull your credit report for free. We'll show you how, you know, resources where you can get assistance in working on your credit. Um, usually they look for, you know, your rental history. So, you know, we're gonna ask you, do you have, you know, your rental receipts in order? If you don't have your rent, um, rental receipts in order, were you impacted by COVID? Did, you know, did you apply for housing is um, key. In addition to making sure or to um, helping to empower you in your business, we also um, have access to other resources or knowledge of other resources that can help you in certain situations. Because if you're in eviction court, how does that mentally and financially impact you to be able to operate your business? If you have been displaced from your home, how does that impact your business? Because where are you storing your tent and your tables? With, you know, all of these different things. So those will be one-on-one -on -one conversations. It's up to the person to share, you know, how much or how little information that they want. But again, we're looking at this from a holistic um, approach because a lot of times businesses in our community um, fail, not because the person doesn't have a good product, not because the person doesn't have the potential to have this great business sense, but sometimes it's just that life overwhelm, personal life overwhelms us to the point that we're not able to function as a micro entrepreneur and as a business. So those are uh, the different things that we'll uh, talk about um, as part of the program and helping you get loan ready. So as I mentioned, um, we've been speaking with the city and the county um, asking for assistance. So where the city comes in is that we were able to request a permit to hold the night market in Lamert Park. And it's gonna be on 43rd place in between uh, Crenshaw and Degnan. Um, because it's a night market, it doesn't impact the businesses. Most of the businesses are gonna be closed by the time we set up. But because it is in Lamert Park, 
we're going to do a lot of uh, marketing and outreach to encourage people to come and buy from you. That's the other great part of this cohort is that it's not um, just a lot of lecture, people telling you what you should do and why you should do it. But once you get the lecture part on Tuesday, then on Wednesday evening, you get to apply it in practice, not just theory. And again, it will help you to start generating a client base. Um, there are um, really popular food vendors, and we see that they post on their social media where they're going to be. They have their calendar planned out like a month to two months, in, two months in advance. So the hope is, you know, once someone comes into the night market and they taste your amazing uh, donuts or your amazing lemonade, then they're going to say, okay, well, where are you going to be? And you could say, well, on Saturday I'll be in the, on Sunday I'll be in the village. On Saturday I'll be in Long Beach. I'll be at the solar beehive or whatever, but you get to build relationships and take those clients with you. The other thing that we're looking, um, we would like to see a more vendors doing is how do you offer pre-orders and online sales so that you generate income seven days a week and not just at the market. Um, so I kind of digress right here, but the city, um, CD10 has, uh, is working with us to get a permit for this night market that would be on 43rd place in between Crenshaw and Degnan. We talked to the county this morning. Generally, when you set up an event like this, you have to, the vendors will pay for TFF, your temporary food facility uh, permit. We've asked the county to um, waive those fees. We also asked them to help us get the uh, applications expedited so we can start the market as soon as possible. Um, AJ, I hear the doorbell ringing, but I can't see the button to admit someone. Yeah, I'm admitting people. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so we've asked that the uh, fees be waived for the temporary food facility uh, permit. Um, I mentioned earlier, we requested that a health department inspector come out and uh, speak to um, all the vendors and answer questions. And then we're um, asking also the county to provide some financial support for the operational costs. We're going to have to have porta potties and security and lights and things like that. Usually those fees are covered by um, charging the vendors a fee. Again, we want to empower you. So we're trying to find ways where we can bring these resources um, at no cost to you. We want you guys to invest your money back in your business at this point. We want you guys to invest in your marketing at this point. So these are all the things that we're working on. And I think that's the last slide. Okay, and that's just my contact. Okay, and that's just my contact information. So that's just a broad overview of what we're looking to do with this class. Um, if anyone has um, any questions, then um, we can take those questions now. Does anyone have any questions? Can you go back to the contact information, please? Uh, yes, let me reshare. I have a question, Jen. Okay. Okay, so on, on the second to the last slide, I think it was, yeah, where it said um, something about cash to bank. So, um, did that mean that we're not taking cash at all or are we doing both cash and um, point of sale? No, I, yeah, she um, just wants to be bankable. You can still take cash. Okay, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> again, just... the okay. whole thing is to get you um, loan ready. So, you know, you have to have at least one business bank account. And then, you know, showing the transactions going in, um, it helps you when the underwriter is looking at um, your complete loan package because it's one, and I, I have a mortgage underwriting background. I used to be a mortgage loan officer. So when we're looking at someone's bank statements, you know, a couple of things that we're looking for is our, the consistency of the deposit. So if you're telling me that you're setting up at a market, you know, um, 10 days a week, I mean, 10 days a month. But when I look at your bank statement, I only see maybe one or two deposits, then that's, um, you know, well, how much are you making on those other days? Why isn't the money coming in? Even if you're collecting cash, 
it suggested that you deposit the cash into your account like the day after the market. If you do a market on a Saturday um, or Sunday, then deposit the money um, first thing on Monday so that there's a connection between the event that you did and a deposit. Because when underwriters are looking at your package, it's not like you have a regular pay stub. You know, if we're talking about people who are employed, I can ask you for 30 days worth of pay stubs and I can see. Whereas when you're self-employed, we need you to help us to be able to see the actual amount of income that you're earning. The biggest thing you want to do is if you take a cash transaction, is just ring it up, right? So that's really why the POS is critical. Um, and so that way, it, it doesn't matter if they're paying you cash. We want to show the income coming in. And the best way to do that is to have a paper trail through the POS system. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Did anyone need me to go back to any of the other slides? If no one, um, well, Asia can, like she said, go back to any of the other slides, or if you have any questions, then um, please um, jump in and ask them, because this is also how um, your questions help guide what the curriculum looks like, because these are the things that um, we kind of compiled based on conversations with some vendors. Um, I'm not a vendor. I don't even cook. So there's a lot of things that I may not, you know, have an awareness of. So it really helps when we can get input from all of the vendors. And um, if there's no questions, then I can turn it over to Asia so she can talk more about uh, things from her perspective. I, um, hi, this is Nikia. Um, I think I missed the Tuesday. What time will the Tuesday be? It's um, uh, via Zoom or in person, it's a hybrid and it's on Tuesdays from 10 to 11. I can't guarantee this, but what I'm trying to um, ask if we can incorporate is a thing where the Zoom sessions are recorded. And if you can't make it um, every Tuesday, we're gonna ask you to make most of them. But if there's one or two that you uh, need to miss, that you can uh, go back and watch the recording and maybe there's a quiz or something attached to it just to document that you um, did in fact watch the Zoom because I know a lot of vendors also have nine to five jobs and that's sometimes um, an obstacle for people to participate in um, some of the class sessions. So again, I can't guarantee it, but we're gonna try to figure out um, that piece right there. Were there any other questions? I know a few people dropped in a little bit later after we did all the introductions. Um, so it'd be great if you could at least introduce yourself through the chat, or if you feel comfortable, you can take yourself off mute and share, uh, just because you'll be seeing the same folks in all of these classes and at the night market. It'd be great to build not only some camaraderie, but networking opportunities. So uh, again, if you didn't participate in that introduction in the very beginning, I'm going to leave it open as an opportunity where you can either take yourself off mute or uh, drop your information in the chat. Hi, I didn't get to introduce myself in the beginning. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Hi, this is Maisha. Most of the people on here that do know me know me as my. Um, I pop up from time to time in Lemur Park and I sell tacos and everything. And I just want to network and learn how to become an official, you know, a more official vendor and, you know, um, grow my, mm -hmm. my, my business and clientele. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe Chef here. Perfect. Yes. Hi, I'm Chef Kia. Um, with my daddy's recipes, I have a plant-based food and wellness company. We sell food and desserts. Everything is plant-based. Nice to meet you. Nice. All right. We get another vegan chef. Um, and again, you can also drop your website or uh, social media handles in the chat so we can connect with you online as well. Um, I'm not going to take up too much time. Oh, go ahead. Is there someone else? Hi, good evening, ladies. This is Chef Stephanie Johnson from Sweet Blessings and Edible Blessings Catering. Most people know me, but if you don't, now you do. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do mostly Southern um, desserts and um, Southern um, cooking, mm -hmm. but I know how to cook everything. I'm classically French trained. So um, I'm pretty, pretty versatile in um, cooking. Um, so yeah, that's me, Chef Stephanie Johnson. Hey, hey everybody. Welcome. Hey. All right, was there anyone else that we may have missed from earlier? Okay, if not, let me just stop share so we can all see each other. So one last thing that I just wanted to add, um, this is really full circle for me. My very, very first job was the McDonald's right there off of French on 43rd. So at 16, I was there, uh, you know, very cliche working the drive through, but I ended up loving that job, I ended up getting promoted to a manager. And then that kind of set off a, a chain reaction in me of the hospitality industry. So I've been in hospitality a little over 26 years. 18 of those years were spent in management, both here in uh, Los Angeles and in Las Vegas, um, opening restaurants, not just in those two states, but in other states as well. Uh, and then quite honestly, I'll share with you, I got burnt out. You know, I'm a single mom. I, I got tired of the grind, but I had all of this knowledge about the food industry. So I decided to open up a consulting business and fast forward three years later, 200 plus clients later, uh, working with three different small business development centers. I'm just excited to be able to see not only businesses grow and flourish, but to help people that look like me grow and flourish. So I'm here as a resource to be that sort of um, industry expert. I will be teaching again some of those classes, food costs, uh, the health inspection preparation, licensing. So you will see me not only in on Zoom, but I can't wait to come and just actually sew into your businesses at the night market, um, get the word out. This is a great opportunity for you guys to network, not just with each other, but through all of the vendors that are, um, or the people that are gonna come to this night market. We wanna create a following, we wanna have a buzz. You know, if you live anywhere during Lemur Park, you can hear the drum circles on you know, Saturday and Sunday nights. And so we now wanna make Wednesday a night where people are also excited to come and visit. So this is a really um, poignant moment Something I tell some of my clients, you know, when they get really frustrated and they, they're, fr they're, they're, you know, they're not making the money they thought they would make and they feel like, why am I doing this? I want you to think back to your, your grandmother and think about how proud you probably are making them. The opportunities that they have uh, were nothing compared to what you have. So to be able to be an entrepreneur, run your own business, um, create something from scratch and sell it and people buy it and pay you good money for it. There's nothing more rewarding. So I'm just excited again to work with you guys. And I look forward to end up seeing the success of this program. Thank you so much, Asia. And even though I'm not a vendor and I don't cook, the other day I was listening to Asia talk and just the language that she used. And when you plate your dish and menu engineering and all of these different things, um, I was like, uh, okay, I wanna hear more, I wanna learn more. So I think um, this is gonna help elevate just the business and everything to a whole new level. Um, and then as we collectively do this, I personally believe it'll elevate um, vending just within the community. Um, one of the things that we heard when we were um, doing the market in Lamert Park Village is there were some current concerns about um, the vendors and um i always want to keep it positive but i was just in one meeting and someone referred to our vendors as hobby vendors you know but and i think that's disrespectful to someone's uh business to refer to it as a hobby business so i'm glad that everyone came here um you know wanting to scale their business up to the next level um i'm super excited to hear people say I don't want to just be a pop-up. I want to be a trailer. I eventually want to get to um, a brick and mortar. Um, I think the Ness was on here. And when I spoke with her earlier today, she was hearing that she has a brick and mortar, but she still takes her truck out for certain things. That's, that's huge, you know, where you have the best of both worlds. Um, so again, um, I'm really hoping for questions or comments or input just to see what everyone's thoughts are um as far as the, what we've presented tonight because we want to make this um cohort what it is that you want to see what it is that you feel like you need um so if everyone could just maybe give one or two thoughts before we end i'd really appreciate it
I just, this is Kim. I just want to say thank you for putting this together. This is very great, especially for me and, you know, everyone else that um, want to grow in their business. I just say for me, like, I feel like one minute I'm on a roll, I'm on a, a train going, going, get all excited. And then I feel like I'm like from A to Z, but hold up, I need to backtrack and go back to B. So I'm missing different points in between where I'm not sure of, I get confused and I do something else that makes me happy. Um, so just trying to, I guess, understand more of the administrative administrative side. So creating recipes, that's the fun part for me. Talking to people, that's the fun part for me. But the back end administrative side is just not it's confusing and not that fun. But I just want to get more knowledgeable in it. So again, thank you for this. And I'm taking all the mental notes and written notes that I can get from this. And if we have any other questions other than like if we're in a class session, can we reach out to one of you all? Is that possible? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Asia put her um, information, her contact information in there. Um, I'll put mine in. Um, and also, I created a whole website just specifically for this. It's blackwomenvend.com. So you can always uh, reach out through there. Um, and the goal of that website is we'll share information beyond the classroom. So if things, you know, maybe there's an article or if there's an event or something like that, we always want to have um, information readily accessible to everyone. And thank you for sharing. Can we get um, anyone else? Thank you. Okay. Thought, feedback before we go? I'll, I'll say something. Um, I am not new to any of the uh, vending experience. I, that's where I started at farmer's markets with my coffee. Uh, I actually have a coffee brand. I didn't mention that. And it's the coffee that Tabitha Brown uses in her restaurant and at Kale My Name. Uh -huh. Um, so I, if I can encourage you, uh, I've done a lot of things scared. Uh, I am growing, but, um, I'm growing by myself. So like a lot of things I do by myself, I have to turn work down because I don't have help. So I, you know, like I reached out to Asia. I'm like, I want to scale my brand. Like I know my coffee belongs in Whole Foods Target. It's like, I, I know my stuff is the SHI, you know. So I'm like, it's, it, you know, let's take this to the next level. And I've been trying to do that since, um, since COVID. Uh, but if, if anything I can say is to just, you got to stay with it. Uh, I've done so many things scared. I drove the truck scared. Um, I was in my truck in a, um, a contract at LAX when COVID hit. I was there for six months, COVID hit, got into the restaurant. Asia came and did a mock, um, what do you call it? It was a mock health inspection. There you go. Yeah, so she's like, okay, you need this. You don't need that. Like I was gonna use my handheld uh, square device and she's like, no, 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 no. You need a POS system. And I'm like, but I can use, you know, cause I just didn't want, you know, you're trying to hold on to every dime. Um, and you know what they say, scare money don't make no money. Um, but you're trying to be smart about every move that you make. Like everything I do is very calculated because like, I don't have room for error. Um, so just have this, the stick to itness um, and, and really, you're going to have to be the face of your brand, fight for your brand. Uh, when people tell you you can't do it, that gives me all the, the energy that I need because I'm going to prove them wrong. Um, so just stay encouraged. You're trying to get to that, whatever the next level is. If it's a trailer, if it's a brick and mortar, this, you got to just stay with it. You know, we women can do anything that we put our minds to. And that's it. Well said. Absolutely. Enough. Thank you. Would any one more person like to share? Uh, Nadia, Lonnie. 
Um, just, I think that it was very informational. Um, I'm excited. I'm so excited about this because um, organization and compartmentalizing and putting things where they're supposed to be and, and, and visual aids and, and, you know, aesthetics that feeds my baby OCD. So I'm excited because I like things. I, you know, I have, I, I feel like listening to you itemize and listening to you list the things that we will be learning, we'll be gaining, we'll be accomplishing, we'll be experiencing. Um, I have a background in, in, um, in, uh, food service and retail. So, um, my business has, it's like peanut butter and jelly, no bread, peanut butter and bread, no jelly. I'm like, oh, I have that, oh, but I don't have that. I have this, but no, I don't have that. Like I have POS system and I have the, the tiles where you can just click the picture and ring it up, but I don't have the help. Right. And then I'm, I'm like, like Vanessa, I'm turning down business. Well, not so much this year. It slowed down a little bit. I don't know what's going on with uh, with um, pop ups even, but I, I was at a point where I was turning down business because I can only be in so many places at once. So you know, I'm excited because I feel like I'll get that that uh, that push or that um for that what that one thing that ingredient. It's like I I know I have the formula right, but what am I missing that takes it to the next level? What is it that I'm not doing that or what, what am I doing that's hindering me or what am I not doing that will take me over the edge? So I'm excited. Get excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm like super stoked. <laughs> I went and got my car in order and I'm getting the van in order so that I have full vehicular uh, mobility. And you guys, I'm in Rancho Cucamonga. I'm coming from San Bernardino County for this. I'm coming. <laughs> and I'm bringing Dinah Cakes with me. You're on mute, Jen. You are on mute. Okay, thank you. I, just um, you I said thank you. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I said thank you, Lonnie. Thank you for sharing. And if we could get one more person, just one more person. I'll, I'll, I'll talk. Um, this is Nadia. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this or whatever. I've been um, doing um well vending or micro uh, entrepreneuring um serial entrepreneuring for a long time or whatever but um not so much on a i guess legal basis on trying you know trying to get every format in place or whatever so i think this program is going to take me um and all of us to the next level on um whatever we're trying to do so i'm super excited about that Okay, all right, thank you. And then um, Nakia was gonna say something. Um, I was just gonna say I'm excited about the program. I'm excited because um, like um, Lonnie said, I have a lot of the things, but um, like the bookkeeping, I have a bookkeeper, but getting the stuff to her at the time she's asking for it, uh, I don't know who's going to do that. Um, and so I need to put systems <laughs> in place so that she don't leave me. Um, <laughs> and so that I can be efficient. Um, and so I'm eager to learn those systems so that we can buy some of our time back. Um, Black women are some of the hardest working people in the world. And um, I want us to work smarter and not harder <laughs> because we don't have any more hours in a day. So I'm eager to learn um, everything that's gonna come from this program. So thank you. All right, thank you so much for sharing that, um, Nakia. And the last thing that I would like to ask everyone to do is save the chat because people are putting their contact information in there. They're putting their Instagram in there. So when you bring up the chat, if you go to the bottom and you see the three little dots, if you click on the three little dots, it'll say uh, save chat, and then you should be able to save the chat. So, okay, I take that back. I said that was the last thing I was gonna ask, but I have two things to ask. Please save the chat. And then once you save the chat, go through and follow the people that put their Instagram um, 
handle, I think it's called, put their Instagram handle on there. Vanessa put the um, address of her brick and mortar uh, right there on Redondo and Pico, I believe. Um, let's make a point to go by and buy a cup of coffee from Vanessa instead of going to Starbucks. Um, however we can support each other, even if it's just a page follow, um, send someone a DM, you know, um, introducing yourself once we're off this call, but let's, um, let's get together and make this work for all of us and each of us. And with that, that's all I have. So I'll leave the, um, the Zoom going so people have a chance to um, save the chat. And then um, we'll, um, the registration link for the class, once you think about it, if you're able to commit and willing to commit to the entire program, you'll be able to sign up on the website blackwomenven.com tomorrow by 10 o'clock. We'll put the link up and then we'll go from there. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good evening. I'll leave the chat, uh, leave it up so you can uh, download the chat. But thank you and good evening. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Jen, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, where do I go in the chat part? Um, when you go down to the bottom of the chat, where the box where you can uh, like type a new message, uh -huh. there should be um, three little icons. One looks like a piece of paper. One is a happy face. And right next uh -huh. to the happy face is three dots. And if you click on the three dots, it says, uh, the first option says, save chat. Okay, um, let me see. I only have one icon, icon. I'm not able to save it. Okay, yeah, my, so then, I don't okay, have either. And it might be have, um, in, that, in that bar, I only have the happy face. I don't have the paper or the uh, three dots. So I'm just gonna okay. hope that someone has it and they can email it. I will email it to everyone who registered or everyone who is on the call. So um, I will save it and I will email it to everyone. Okay, Jen, that will work. Chat or through their registration. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jen. Okay. And no problem. Thank you all for being here. All right, good night. Thanks for having me.